Chapter 386, Flying Dagger's Debut Lu Xu studied the malfunctioning magical weapons and silently agreed with the vendor. Indeed, there were magical waves inside them, but their quality was even lower than the rusted sword he fed to his golden water. But the vendor placed particular emphasis on a statue, this wooden statue is still working. It brings refreshing effects upon activation. Even he was not very confident about its use. Which practitioner would need such a useless function? Lu Xu grinned, so it's a tin of Red Bull I suppose. From Li Yan's distress, plus 99. He hesitated for a moment, well, you may want to take a look at the rest? Until then, no one claimed to have the ability to fix these ancient magical tools. Thus, the vendor was worried too. They were neither sellable nor usable and could at most be used to trick those newbies into buying them. It was actually a rather safe plan. Real pros would not even appreciate his garbage while rookies would not be strong enough to fight him. The vendor was a man of honesty, though, bro, I don't want to lie to you as we both shared the common Chinese bloodline. To tell you the truth, I've never heard of anyone who can repair them. But they were indeed genuine and working magical weapons in the past. Moreover, the prices I opened are quite low. In this golden era of cultivation, everyone craved to upgrade their level. However, without cultivation resources, it would be a painfully slow process. One slow move would drag down one's entire progress. Many unaffiliated practitioners hope to ascend to Class D in the shortest time possible so as to pick up the unwanted stuff, behind pros in the remains. When the pros went directly after the relics, the scavengers on the peripheral region were all Class Ds, which left no space for the Class Es. In other words, they had to be strong enough to be able to clean up behind the pros. Lu Xu's gaze wandered over the items at the stall. He had noticed during the vendor's introduction that it was the palm-sized statue that caught the flying dagger's interest. He then thought, there were so many malfunctioning magical weapons scattered across the globe, discarded and despised by the practitioners, but his golden water did not seem to discriminate at all? He used to think that nurturing the golden water might be unaffordable because his possessions were still usable. What if he fed his water these spoiled items? What would happen then? Honestly speaking, it was Lu Xu's first time to witness items capable of leeching off the power of magical weapons. He was curious about what it would finally grow into. Did it eat chives? If yes, it would save so much trouble. In order to groom the water into the best form possible, the water type class be used to pay special attention to its diet. Now, however, it was about to eat grass under its new master Lu Shu. After careful consideration, he decided to make the purchase first. Not an expert at bargaining, he lowered his voice and asked Lu Xiaoyu for help, Xiaoyu, cute girls like you are good at bargaining. Now's your turn. In the past, Lu Xiaoyu could always get the products at lower prices. Lu Xiaoyu gave him a nod of assurance. Bargaining lesson 1, be firm. She stared straight into the vendor's eyes and up close, pack up. We're taking everything for two magical stones. From Li Yan's distress, plus 666. Li Yan's face almost paled in anger. He wanted to offer a price of 50 stones, but Lu Xiaoyu had messed up his plan completely. Was it not already reasonable to sell each magical weapon for five stones? Two stones? Are we even talking about the same item? Reassessing the situation for a long moment, he uttered, You must be kidding me, young girl. Forty magical stones. Not below forty. Lu Xiaoyu was in deep thought, three stones. Is three stones okay? Li Yan almost choked in shock, are you really listening to me? Not below forty. Li Yan was holding his ground firmly. Thirty. It cannot be more, Lu Xiaoyu was still calm. Although not up to his expectations, the sudden jump from 3 to 30 still gave him a rewarding feeling. Li Yan took a second thought, 38. This is the lowest. Really? 30. 37. 30. 
36. Let's go, pulling at Lu Xu's hand, Lu Xiaoyu was leaving. On the other hand, Li Yan was in desperate need of cultivation resources. He recalled a lesson his father once taught him, sometimes one must learn to swallow his pride in this society. Don't. Is 35 okay? Take everything with 35 stones. From Li Yan's distress, plus 777. Satisfied, Lu Xu took out 35 stones and left at once. His anticipation was set at 50, but Lu Xiaoyu was impressively helpful. Of course, there was a certain level of luck involved as well, as Li Yan was in a rush to get rid of those items in exchange for resources. With high expectations, Lu Xu went back with a parcel of scraps. How was it his business whether Li Xiao was doing well with his magical stones? Finally able to take a step closer to lifting the seal on his killer gourd, Lu Xu's mind was filled with the fantasies regarding his deity slaying flying dagger. From his point of view, the dagger must have been suppressed. Else, it would not have been so unreliable. Just imagine, a turnaround baby would get his dagger to kill whoever he wanted to on the battlefield. How terrific! Lu Xu's ego was inflating rapidly in his wonderful daydream. After he returned to the safe house, Lu Xu decided to cast aside the matter of his deity slaying dagger first. The best must be left for the last. Upon engulfing the nine magical scraps, the golden water actually expanded another one-third in size at a visible rate. Just a while ago, it was only as big as an electric rice cooker. After that, with all meticulousness, Lu Xu placed the statue on the table. His eyes were filled with excitement, look carefully. Then, he gently retrieved his gourd from the seal of lands. Instantly, a white flash cut through the air, almost piercing the atmosphere apart. Its speed was stunningly much faster than Lu Xu's concealed arrow and corpse dog. Before he could react, the flash had returned to the gourd after a clack. And the statue on the table had been split into two. Holding his breath, Lu Xu awaited further changes. But nothing else happened. That's it? Lu Xu was in shock, that's it. He stared at the split statue in disbelief. So earlier you were simply excited about breaking it apart? Then could you not just do it there? It would have saved me the trouble of buying it. Just how bloody unreliable are you? Could you please be serious for once? Frustrated, Lu Xu started shaking the gourd violently, come out. You hear me? I'm going to teach you a lesson today, titled How to Be a Good Dagger 101. But the dagger did not make a second appearance. Indeed, it was to blame. In fact, so long as it was hiding inside, Lu Xu was helpless too, except for giving the dagger some motion sickness inside the gourd. Chapter 387, Road Fairs the dagger debut had concluded with great success, just not within Lu Xu's expectations. However, the first showing of killer weapons were supposed to be spectacular and magnificent, right? Why did it end up like this? Lu Xu turned his gaze to the half statue, were you just showing you can slice things? Speaking of which, who was that statue of? Why did the dagger insist on slashing him? Was there enmity between them? Could it be Lord Luya's enemy? Lu Xu suddenly started guessing whether it was anyone from the investiture of the gods, but gave up after merely two seconds. How could it possibly be the deity slaying flying dagger? The legendary killer weapon would never be so unreliable. If it was indeed, the Lord must have disassembled it to vent his anger. Wait. Was it not the case that the gourd was separated from the flying dagger since the very start? It was totally possible. No, no way. This did not make any sense at all. Lu Xu shook his head in denial. Lu Xiaoyu hesitated for a long moment before quipping, was this what you wanted to show me? I would say like owner, like dagger. Hey. Lu Xu barked, are you being sarcastic? You don't say, Lu Xiaoyu sat down and played with her phone. Connected to the Wi-Fi in the bedroom next door, Xiaoyu started watching Naruto. 
Never had they expected that the Heavenly Network was so considerate as to equip the safe house with all these convenient facilities. Many tourists might find it inconvenient to travel in Thailand. In order to cater to their needs, some hotels had reinforced their basic services, including internet and daily necessities. But in some others, even toothbrushes, towels, shampoo and body wash were not provided. Honestly speaking, it was indeed substandard when compared to China, where toiletries and shampoo alike were basic items available in every decent hotel. Moreover, the food there could not suit everybody's taste. Most tourists would regret not bringing cup noodles after a few days in Thailand. This was due to the sour, sweet and spicy flavor of local dishes, which the Chinese found rather difficult to get used to. Thus, after one meal there, it had left Lu Xiaoyu resorting to cup noodles. At this moment, Lu Xiaoyu suddenly frowned, shifting her gaze to the ground. She sensed an earth-type practitioner's spirit passing underneath. In fact, just a while ago, what escaped from the split statue was a dying spirit, which was killed by the flying dagger in the same slash, but Lu Xiaoyu had not told Lu Xu about it. Hence, in her perception, the true target of the dagger was the spirit, not the statue. Now, she was displeased. It was not a big deal to clash into other Earth-type metahumans underground, but what were they doing underneath their house? Moreover, what was more intolerable was the person's attempt to peek above the surface. Without hesitation, Lu Xiaoyu beckoned Anthony over and, covered his foolish smile with her pink mask. In the next instance, Anthony sank into the floor with his pink mask and chased off the Earth-type metahuman. The metahuman in front became flustered by the pursuer. Judging from his incredible speeds, his identity was clear, he was the Class B pro and he was about to catch up. However, with the fluke that this pro might be a peace lover based on his lack of reactions earlier, the man thought it would be just fine to make way for the expert behind him. All of a sudden, all the earth elements around him solidified under Anthony's control and trapped him inside. Then, without a word, Anthony started looking for something underground while dragging the giant soil ball behind. Unable to move inside, the earth-type metahuman became Anthony's prisoner and followed him around to wherever he went. But what the hell were you doing? Soon, he realized the pro had just captured another earth-type metahuman that was active underground. Within minutes, there was another one. Like candied haws on a stick, the Earth-type metahumans were chained into one line, moving after Anthony one after another. All attempts at resistance were rendered futile by the difference in their power. How desperate! Did anyone cause the pro any inconvenience? Able to see through the Earth, the metahumans exchanged confused looks with one another. One of them gestured, what's going on? The other one replied, your guess is as good as mine. The usual solution to a conflict underground would be a fight. But now, Anthony clearly held the advantage over the rest. Just like chicks lining up in front of an eagle, they were totally on different levels. Meanwhile, Lu Xu was in shock, what's happening? Why are there so many distress points? They are from various countries, and some more. English, Korean, German, Japanese, French, Portuguese. There were already nine languages in his background panel. What? Did he do the public wrong? He hadn't done anything yet. Lu Xu started reflecting on his life, about whether he had done something that might evoke public anger. Satisfied, Lu Xiaoyu controlled Anthony to lead the line towards the empty space near an underground water drainage system. The dozen of Earth-type metahumans followed Anthony's orders closely and queued up in the sewers, like a bunch of kids getting punished by their teacher. Then, the pro made his first appearance, but his black foggy form startled everyone present. Could he be a double awakening metahuman? Subconsciously they had associated Anthony's foggy body to another awakened power. Class B status was already scary enough, coupled with the fact that he had two powers. The metahuman prisoners were even more careful in behaving themselves now. However, why are you naked? And you are wearing a mask? For what? Unwilling to be recognized while being a streaker. 
that reminded them of a common joke. If you were seen naked, would you cover the top half or the bottom half? The correct answer was face, as you would not want anyone to recognize who you were. But now, despite the resemblance to the joke, everyone was seized by fear at the sight of Anthony's pink little mask. Could he be a pervert? A chill went down everybody's spine. Could he have some peculiar fetish? Just when the thought set in, the pro started touching one of them without concern for their feelings. Everyone was terrified and sent another series of plus 999 distress points to Lu Xu. Hence, Lu Xu was thrown into another round of reflection despite having confirmed his innocence. Then, they could only stare as all their money was taken away by the pro, including the coins. However, they were relieved to keep their chastity. A line of English appeared using the deep sea white sand. Everyday Underground Runaround, by Taylai? Taylai stood for Compulsory Traffic Accident Liability Insurance, with a particular emphasis on the word compulsory. Right. So that was the point. Chapter 388, Private Savings. It took them great effort to finally understand Anthony's awkward phrasing, as the translation produced by mobile software were grammatically incorrect. In the sewers, they exchanged a startled look. It was their first time hearing that Taylai was applicable in underground transport as well. Are you dead broke? You must be, right? Deep sea white sand was nothing ordinary, and every earth type metahuman would die to obtain it. But why had it become a caption tool in this pro's hands? Usually, the various organizations would treat each other with courtesy, as the top survival strategy in this era was to have fewer enemies and focus more on strengthening one's own power. But now, they had run into an unreasonable yet invincible rival. Who could they find for help? At first, Lu Xiaoyu was annoyed that someone wanted to peek on them inside their safe house. But he thoughts had changed. Now she only wanted to rob them. Although Lu Xu had given her enough pocket money and even his debit card was with her, she felt guilty for spending Lu Xu's hard-earned cash. When they went shopping, she would still pick cheaper products. Lu Xu labored arduously day after day, so how could she squander it away? Lu Xiaoyu had decided that she would earn money herself. Moreover, she had always wanted to treat Lu Xu to a meal and had cast her eyes on a supreme buffet in Luocheng priced at 300 yuan each. However, how could she treat him with his money? Unwilling to do so, she had started to make money on her own. While Anthony was counting the money, Lu Xiaoyu was elated in her room. No wonder Lu Xu was so fond of making money, as the happiness attached was so profound. With so many different currencies, she had to get them exchanged at the bank. But Lu Xiaoyu was not in a rush. The line of metahumans were beginning to have doubts about their lives when the pro began counting money like a kid. It was probably the class B with the most unique personality that they had ever met. Just how poor are you? The expert's mysterious image had fallen flat in their mind. Despite coming from various countries, English was a universally understood language for most practitioners. After all, unlike Lu Xiaoyu who had spent most of her time in China, proficiency in English was a necessary skill for those risking their lives on the international arena. Meanwhile, the deep sea white sand had rearranged into another line of software translation styled English. I will give you something in exchange. Instantly, everyone held their breaths in surprise. Was the pro suddenly being generous and intended on teaching them some Earth-type secret skills? Or was it a recipe to Class B? If not, it would be good to simply leave a positive impression so that the pro might provide some protection in the remains. In that case, they would be much safer, as there were a total of only 11 Class B experts in all of Pattaya. Everyone looked at Anthony expectantly, but the latter remained still for a long moment. After pondering for up to two minutes and one minute for the translation tool to finish its job, another line appeared. Since you are entering the remains soon. Everyone lit up, as expected, the pro was about to. But before they could jump in joy, the sand had rearranged. 
then I will grant you 365 wishes. What bloody 365 wishes? They felt insulted intellectually. The thing was, how many days would they spend in the remains? 365 wishes were totally more than enough. At the same time, Lu Xu was still looking closely at his background panel in an attempt to make some deductions about the real-time situations, based on the fluctuation in distress points. Just when there was a hint at calming down, another surge appeared, which brought Lu Xu into reflection again. Then, he finally realized something was off. Turning to Lu Xiaoyu's room, he demanded, Where is Anthony? Did you let him out for a fight? Lu Xiaoyu's smiling eyes squeezed into two little crescents, don't worry. Everything is under control. Lu Xu. An awful hunch reminded Lu Xu that the entire city went into upheaval the last time Lu Xiaoyu said so. At this moment, Anthony rose from the surface, with a handful of change in his hands, including Korean won, Japanese yen, US dollars and euros. Lu Xu drew a startled breath, how many people did you rob? What are you up to? To treat you to a meal, Lu Xiaoyu said as though it was only natural, I heard there's a new buffet restaurant with high ratings. This is my own money. Lu Xu mused for a long while, suddenly understanding Lu Xiaoyu's intentions. Meanwhile, he never cared about where the money was from. He smiled, then we must have something superlative. Of course. Lu Xiaoyu was happy to finally have the ability to earn money on her own. Although she did not do it lawfully, it was her private savings after all. Ever since they embarked on the journey of revenge, both of them had experienced certain changes in their personality. To put it more accurately, it was more of a liberation than change. In the end, Li Yixiao could not sell all their magical stones. Not because of the language barrier, though, but he was unhappy about the local price range. In China, the market price for a stone would be stabilized at around 120,000 yuan. But here, taking currency exchange rates into consideration, it was only 80,000 yuan each. Thus, Li Ixiao decided to hold on to his stones after selling only one. Instead of returning to the market, Lu Xu immediately phoned the old man. After careful consideration, he made up his mind to resell his stones and the eleven petals through the Golden Foundation. Although particularly valuable, they were useless in his hands. Thus, Lu Xu would rather exchange it for practical combat effectiveness. The old man did not question him about the origin of his resources, nor his plan. Lu Xu only asked to trade his twenty-five magical stones and eleven petals for forty-five ragged magical weapons as food for his divine water. Thoroughly disappointed in his purple golden gourd, Lu Xu had no alternatives but to redirect his attention to the golden divine water. After a day's research, he realized the item might possibly be one of the three legendary divine waters. Nonetheless, the golden divine water in history only fed on flesh and bones and was never recorded to have means to grow. But Lu Xu's water was like sulfuric acid with the ability to devour magical weapons. Maybe we should call it divine water for now. Lu Xu had tried to touch the water himself. Interestingly, he would not be corroded, which meant more functions were available. Despite the supreme attacking power of corpse dog and concealed arrow among class C flying daggers, Lu Xu was in need of presentable defense tools. Though powerful, his celestial cloak was never meant to be shown. Then, a question struck him. At a time when other class C's made use of their elemental armor and Anthony with his condensed armor made of deep sea white sand, he could use some help from his divine water. With the golden divine water outside, coating the celestial cloak inside, his defense abilities would be greatly boosted. Truth be told, Lu Xu was indeed envious of Li Yixiao's tough-skinned and unkillable tiger fist. As the saying went, everything comes to he who has money. Chapter 389, Eyes on the Opening Remains As an organization established before the regeneration of Spirit Qi, the Golden Foundation had a rich history of magical weapon collection and the corresponding research on their repair. But none seemed to have mastered the techniques of weapon restoration and very few were able to even create primary weapons. 
Currently, like the Heavenly Network, most organizations had adopted a tactical measure by building standard magical weapons infused with spirit chi conducting metals. However, the scientific means were incomparable to the ancient techniques, which produced weapons of much purer spirit chi concentration. After the long, dark ages of spirit chi exhaustion, those smelting techniques devised by ancestors had almost gone extinct. As a result, people were maniacally obsessed with remains, in which numerous magical weapons were kept intact, as though sealed from the outside world. Trading his extra resources for weapon scraps was a worthy deal for Lu Xu. The two standard swords from inexplicable sources had already been fed to the divine water, but their substandard forging measures failed to bring about much increase in the size of the water. On the other hand, Li Xianyi had sent Lu Xu a total of 50 weapon scraps from the Golden Foundation and all were determined to be beyond use or repair. As soon as Li Xianyi stepped into the safety house, Li Xiao excused himself, saving Lu Xu the effort of hiding the matter from him. Then, Li Xianyi frowned in concern, nowadays, only practitioners keen in weapon forging are interested in these things. Why do you want them? Do you want to study forging techniques too? Of course, you don't have to answer me. I'm just asking. Just a while ago, Nieting killed a class B water type metahuman. Are you aware of that? Lu Xu asked in reply. Judging from the severity of the matter, the Golden Foundation had no reason to be ignorant. Li Xianyi froze, you have that metahuman's killer weapon? Not only was Li Xianyi aware of the matter, he also knew that the person's killer weapon was both money and weapon consuming. Precisely due to its expensive nature, the Class B expert had committed countless unforgivable crimes and taken too many lives, just for money and magical weapons. But Li Xianyi was uncertain about one thing, I heard that he fed it with first class weapons, gained through legal or illegal means. Will it still work if you give it so many weapon scraps? That's a killer weapon. Who knows what may happen? Doesn't matter. It's not particular about its diet, Lu Xu grinned. While others were concerned about affecting its growth with defective items, Lu Xu did not care at all. After all, weapon scraps were still edible. Otherwise, he was unwilling to give away fine weapons, except for things such as the standard swords which were unsuitable to be seen in his possession. Lu Xu did not have the guts to mention that he was planning to feed the divine water with chives. In the old man's presence, he gave all the scraps to the water in one shot. Every piece slowly dissolved upon contact with the all-accepting divine water, until the latter regained its clarity and golden glow. In this process, the water had doubled its size. Then, Lu Xu controlled the water to form an armor around his entire body, it may save my life in the remains. Li Xianyi raised his brows in surprise. Other people's armor was a thin shell over the body, but Lu Xu's seemed more impressive, like a full-length down jacket, with golden light all over. How scared are you? Li Xianyi could not stand him any longer, are you preparing for a moon landing in your spacesuit? Wouldn't it be wasteful if I don't use it? Lu Xu was in high spirits, please think about it. The moment other people try to attack me, their magical weapons will get worn away on my divine water. Therefore, can I call myself the weapon killer? Personally Lu Xu thought it was a good name. There were side effects as well. Before long, two footprints were corroded out on the floor. Had he stood still for a while longer, he might have been able to drill a well. Speechless, Li Xianyi left. Before that, he reminded, although the Golden Foundation has loads of weapon scraps, I do not own them all. However, we will give them to you at the lowest price possible if you have other things for exchange. You have my word. Suddenly Lu Xu felt sorry for himself. If he had known earlier, he should have gone straight to the old man the day before. Now, there was no way for a refund as both the magical weapons and the statue were gone. Speaking of which, he took out his purple golden gourd for another look, shaking it so violently that the flying dagger was about to vomit inside. Truth be told, Li Xianyi was curious about Lu Xu's remaining trump cards. 
despite coming from a humble background, the siblings seemed to always have luck on their side. He was well aware that Lu Xu's membership at the Heavenly Network would never bring him such luxurious welfare. Moreover, those petals certainly did not belong to the network. So, what else did he have? This was out of pure curiosity, or even a sort of expectation. Li Xianyi had a hunch that the kid would become a great surprise to the entire world. It was a strange but inexplicably firm feeling. Lu Xu raised another question before Li Xianyi left, why is the Foundation so persistent in protecting mankind? As we all know, generally speaking, it's a peaceful era now. No one would intentionally destroy our common home should there be a fight. That's an agreement. Li Xianyi shook his head, we are protecting our future. Humans should have the capacity to defend against disasters when they befall us one day. The Golden Foundation is not in control of practitioners from across the world, but neither can we watch and do nothing as they undermine the future of cultivation. Mankind must aim to be more prosperous, which justifies acts of violence, a bridge to a better world. Lu Xu suddenly realized that it was not people that the Foundation was wary of. As for what were the so-called disasters, Li Xianyi remained tight-lipped, the same as Chen Bailey's reaction. But it was not of much concern for Lu Xu. To him, in times of tragedies, his only duty was to protect Lu Xiaoyu and others who had been kind to him from harm. At this moment, a giant wave of spirit qi rolled towards them from the Pattaya coastline, much stronger than ever before. Looking out at the streets through the window, Lu Xu saw practitioners running in that direction. Many low-level practitioners had to seize this opportunity for final training before entering the remains for leftovers. Finally, the opening of the Pattaya remains was just around the corner, right over on the island. Chapter 390, Power Contest The Kochang Island was only 30 minutes ferry away from the Pattaya coastline. More than a month ago, the island started displaying magic features like the Baymang remains. While there were active and threatening skeleton soldiers on empty Baymang, the Kochang remains was characterized with howling, which made the place look like a living inferno at night. Kochang used to be one of the main tourist destinations. In order to cater to the demand for cheap trips, many tour guides took advantage of tourists' ignorance of the situations on the ground and brought them to the low-quality beach at Kochang, resulting in the large flow of local visitors. However, current conditions had forced many tour guides to turn to other visitor itineraries, while more adventurous ones accepted travel requests from practitioners. In fact, practitioners were more lavish about giving tips. It was part of the local culture to leave tips with the usual rate at 10 to 20 baht. But many practitioners liked to give more than 100 baht. A number of practitioners had already visited the place to have a general idea of the locale. Nonetheless, it was not as convenient as urban areas, as there was a severe shortage of accommodation and restaurants. Admittedly, there were the ardent ones who straightaway set up tents on the island awaiting the opening, but ended up sleepless by the howling. Some were even scared back to Pattaya. At present, the outward dispersion of spirit chi signaled the commencement of the remains in three days. As everyone rushed to the seaside, Li Xianyi immediately rose to the sky to manage the matters in the Golden Foundation. The internal meeting about the participation of the Foundation in the remains concluded with Li Xianyi's insistence in joining the contest. The old man himself loved to keep abreast with contemporary events. When every other organization joined forces in protest of Class A's involvement in the remains and foreign affairs, the old man stood firm on fulfilling his own duties. It was understandable, though. With a peacekeeper in place, the foundation could guarantee the safety of Pattaya in such special times. However, it was only recently that the various organizations learned about Li Xianyi's participation in the remains. According to his words, he was only a member of the audience and not a participant. Even when the Golden Foundation was engaged in a confrontation, it was okay. The old man would simply stand aside to watch and would not provide any help to either side. Then which idiot would pick a fight? Who would confront the Golden Foundation when their own Class A was by their side? Actually, Li Xianyi's presence alone was already aggressive. 
but he was not usually like this. Why was there a sudden change in his personality? In the past, the Foundation was thought to be made up of a bunch of passionate morons, who could be easily manipulated in public disputes. But now, their opponents were scared. On the other side, the Heavenly Network was even harder to deal with. As the representative of the entire population of Chinese practitioners, Nia Ting felt shame at taking orders from others. He knew too well about the rule of the survival of the fittest. Therefore, he was totally absent from that meeting. Your protests and leagues were none of my interest. Back then, there was a conspiracy on trying to elect the Heavenly Network into the Council of an International League, so that they could be controlled under internal regulations. But their long wait was only met with a message in Chinese from Nye Ting. According to the almanac, today is not a day for outings. It took the crowd half an hour to figure out the meaning of almanac and another half an hour to understand what it meant to be, not a day for outings. My goodness. Can you please find a better excuse? Then, most of them rejected the proposal of waiting any longer. Every organization had their own dignity to uphold, not as individuals, but as teams. How could they appease their practitioners should they disgrace their establishment? Furthermore, that excuse could be applied on any day. The message was clear. With two Class A's on hand, the Heavenly Network had no intention to be restrained by their worldly regulations. Nonetheless, the network had its own worries as well. Before the commencement of the remains, the Heavenly Network was already under pressure from various organizations. While teams were sent to the remains, others were dispatched to the borders, waiting for orders in the most peripheral cities. However, it remained uncertain whether there would be intruders in Nye Ting's or Chen Bailey's absence. It was widely known that risk-taking was never the priority of the network. During the grand-scale power contest, the Heavenly Network had too large an area to defend but too few manpower on standby. That was the exact reason for the network's urgency in nurturing new forces. As a result, they would rather improve their members' capabilities with incomplete cultivation techniques before refinement than follow suit. Moreover, they had a stunning number of hundreds of thousands of fighters. In comparison, even the second largest organization in the world had only tens of thousands with varying abilities at the moment. In conclusion, the Heavenly Network had a clear advantage over external associations. Some places suffered from a small population in spite of their cultivation heritage. Whereas others, like North America, boasted a large population but had non-existent cultivation history. Everyone was looking for their own solutions, even some had cast their eyes on stealing other people's heritage. What they needed were techniques to improve their capabilities. In the end, Nye Ting and Chen Bailey did not come to Pattaya. Many organizations were aware of Li Xianyi's visit to the capital of China before his arrival in Pattaya, but no one knew what kind of agreement the Golden Foundation and the Heavenly Network had reached. However, it did not mean the Golden Foundation was the sure winner. Due to the increasing size of the remains, it was getting more difficult to locate the relic in the enormous core region. At the same time, other organizations had no obligation to surrender the remains to the Foundation. Since there were no perfect plans in the world, everyone was awaiting unexpected situations. As participants were allocated random positions in the remains, how could Li Xianyi protect all of them? After all, there were creatures in the remains. In the month before, there appeared souls with abilities of up to peak class B in the Cuban remains. Who the hell knew what would happen in the Kochang remains? Thus, people could only seek solace in knowing that they would have Li Xianyi in the remains to deal with the strongest beings there. Meanwhile, the Pattaya Gulf was crowded with throngs of practitioners. It was then that a problem arose, there were an insufficient number of boats. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know 
glass half full or empty And then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 